Good morning. Welcome back to Crochet Rocks. Tracy here. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. So good morning. I um yeah, I got up really early today. But I've got a stomach ache, which I'm not not really happy about. I think it's what I've eaten more than anything, rather than like a bug or anything. Or anything. Do I need to say or anything again? Maybe. Or anything. So, um, yeah, might pop out a little bit later. Uh, see, Gary, he wants to get another roll of wallpaper to finish off the bedroom. So until the wardrobe went in, we couldn't figure out where the wardrobe end didn't. So we didn't need to wallpaper, obviously, behind the wardrobe because it's going to stay there forever and uh, fix to the wall and all that stuff. So just really that little section needed the um the bottom part done and the wallpaper and and a little bit of dado rail that sort of thing and then that one's done i have a terrible itch and i know it's because i put some i put some uh, new cream on and um even though it's winter i started using an spf uh, sunscreen because as i read there's little point in doing um, retinol or derma rolling if you're not going to prevent any more sun damage. So, um, yeah, I, I bought one from the same company where I get my retinol. And, oh, sticky. Really? St and I I tried a La Roche-Posay one and it was completely not sticky. You put it on, it was just like skin. Um and I thought, well, this is a, a skincare company that, you know, <laughs> promotes all the, the right ingredients and everything else. So I'll give theirs a go. Yeah, well, I don't think I'll be kind of putting that on my my face if I want to put any kind of powder on afterwards. Even though I blotted with a kitchen towel and then I put like a moisturiser on and uh, maybe I put my powder on too early. I don't know, but whatever. Um, yeah, and it's making me have an itchy nose. Everything makes me have an itchy nose, seriously. So as it's weekend, we've got one one little Mando picture for two days. So we'll have a look at it twice. There we go. I remember this one. I remember this battle. I do quite sad now I've become a bit of a I never used to like Star Wars really didn't and I used to watch it when I met Gary under sufferance because it was never something that I wanted to ever get into I just found Star Trek very technical and believable Star Wars very fanciful and like a fairy story so they are totally different but it's got me into it now just saying to reiterate was yesterday's email and today is I see your point, which translates to you can express your opinion, but I don't give a damn. These are the hidden thoughts that we have behind our emails. And I have to say, largely, they are correct. Just saying. Joke of the day, then. Let's get that. Oh, hello. Are we on a new page? It's possible because there's only two on that one. <clears throat> Let me have a little look with my light because I'll probably read the same one twice. When you lose your memory, you meet new friends every day. <laughs> very true. It is very true. But, um, you know, Alzheimer's is not to be laughed at, is it? But, you know, these are the benefits. <laughs> the benefits of getting older. I suppose none of them are to be laughed at, but, you know, we have to, don't we? We have to kind of laugh at ourselves and our problems and life. Otherwise, the alternative is it just makes you miserable. And then, you know, where would you be then? <clears throat> well, <laughs> enough of that. <coughs> Sunday today. Well, that means a new giveaway, doesn't it? And it also means that I am lazy, very, very, very lazy. And boy, did I not want to get up to this morning and out of bed.
but the stomach ache made me move so I suppose it's not a bad thing otherwise I might still be there now procrastinating about getting up and moving you know didn't really fancy it. and I think you know part of the fact that I can't wait to get on this low carb diet because I know the energy levels will get more even if it's just enough to make me normal you know that's um that's a bonus isn't it so my tea this morning is a lovely cup of biscuit tea and I can see it sticking to the cup already so it will look awful and I just realized as I was packing all my stuff because we're switching bedrooms around this morning I looked and I thought what have I done with all my perfume oh well I'll just have to stink now obviously I don't stink I've had a shower but you know what I mean I don't smell of anything nice apart from hand cream and I love this it's not a hand cream it's called karma cream which I get from Lush and it it smells amazing and every time I wear it Gary says you've got play-doh on again but I kind of get what he means because I think a lot of Lush smells like play-doh but it's got a sweeter more vibrant smell than than play-doh but I like I like it a lot I like the way it feels so and I like the way it smells so yeah I use that one a lot now and I've got a gigantic tub where I used to have a little tiny pot of um not a sample pot I do still have some of those sample pots somewhere but I don't know where I can't wait to get everything sorted out and straight in the house but at the same time I look at it and think not today <sighs> not today <clears throat> now we had a bit of a drama yesterday I have to say we had the guys come with the furniture and um I said, which have you brought? And they said, all of it. I said, oh, cool, that's all right. So they kind of realised that two things were coming from the same place. So they give them, give them all of it. And they brought the smaller unit in first. They had a bit of a job getting it in. And they did say, well, I don't think we're going to get the larger one in. Um, the problem that they have is it comes via the conservatory. So the conservatory is, I've told you this before, I know, but it's an old fashioned type where you've got like a lean to on the side that goes all the way down the house. And then in the back where we don't sit and drink tea and look at the birdies like most people do in the conservatories. We have um, a utility room kind of conservatory. It's like the old fashioned one where if you were shooting stuff, you would hang it. I don't mean people, just to clarify. Although, you know, no, no. I don't mean people, I mean birds, you know, ofs. Anyway, or does she? Hmm? No, I do. <coughs> so that kind of conservatory rather than the, the plush, well-lit, <laughs> beautiful extra room. You know, it's not like that. Anyway, um, I don't know why I feel the need to explain that things are not as nice as they should. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like one of them posh ones, let's just say. Anyway, because of the lean-to at the side that leads all the way down, it's like a slanted roof. Okay, so they couldn't stand it up because they could just about the single one in the box get that stood up and tilt it and then get it through the door. But the other one being twice as wide meant they couldn't stand it up at all because of the slanted roof, see? So they tried every which way they could. Um... They even tried measuring it to see if we took a window out, you know, one of those that opens, that you can unscrew. Um, that was too big still. So they said if you got someone to actually take the window out, you could get it in that way, but you'd have to play a glazer. So I thought, no, you know, we do funnily enough know somebody who did our doors some time ago. Well, Gary's brother knows him more. And they do little favoured jobs for each other. So that's how we got the doors done. So, we, yeah. So, <laughs> no, no, I don't really know if he can he can do it. Because some time ago, um, after he did our doors, and he gave me the door for the caravan, um, he couldn't fit it, though, because his wife at that time had been diagnosed with cancer. So it didn't, and he was taking a step back and not doing so much. So that was the last we heard. So I don't know what's happened in that man's life. And I didn't know if he could actually um, 
do it for us or not so and I thought what a palaver as well just to get this unit in so then they brought in they left that outside uh, with the van and then they brought in the sofas and once they brought in the sofas and we realized just how much room they took up don't get me wrong, they're not too long. They fit perfectly and I've still got room to walk down the side, open that window that I was worried about not being able to open and uh, stand there and get a lung full of fresh air. I can still do all that. So, um, but if they put that other unit in, then we wouldn't have been able to open the door of one side. We'd have had to have just put stuff in it and then slid it along. <clears throat> so with the TV stand and the single unit, it really would not have gone in. Had we got Martin's house, which is gigantic rooms with massive tall ceilings, lots of exits in and out, um, it would have gone in a treat. But because we've got a little bungalow with um, very awkward to get into access, it wasn't coming in. And so I had to say, no, you have to take that one and reject it, which uh, means they take 25% of the money um, because it, the onus is always on the customer to measure. Well, yeah, measuring, it fits. Measuring, it go through the door. The fact that there's a slanted roof is something you can't, and whether it'll fit that, what the package size it will come in, um, and whether you can do that, the size of it and the logistics, is not measurable. So, um, unfortunately, I will lose 25%, well, we will, of the cost of it um but he did say because i rang him um and he said come in and we'll talk about it and if there's anything you want as well we can perhaps do something with the cost and and see what we can do but i have to say i was very 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 tempted to do a customer service review for furniture village because um i won't do it unless unless things happen down the line regarded the money back and stuff like that but you know what it's like when you ring a company now they've got the delivery men here they're saying um you know about leaving it in the conservatory us getting the window out uh, or taking it away but i'm not sure what your rights are so i thought i'd ring them so i got through straight away and they gave me the guy that served me who's a really lovely guy and we get on very well so I explained to him the problems they were having and he said, I just put you on hold. And I said, OK, well, I got cut off, didn't come back. So from that moment on, when I rang, you get the number and then you can press one for this, two for that. Well, option two was what I needed. So I pressed option two. And from that moment on, I got music. And um, all of them, at the end of the music, a little voice would come in and say, all of our assistants are busy with customers. If you like to leave a message, we'll give you a call back. So I left a message. I didn't call back. And then bearing in mind, I've only just got cut off. So he could have rang me straight back. So I tried again. And I had the same thing. And I tried again. I had the same thing. And this went on and on. I spoke to Gary on the phone. Because he was at work. And then I tried again. I had two, one on one phone, one on the other. Constant music, not being able to get in touch. Option one was make a sale, you know, if you want to buy something. I thought they'll answer that phone, but it might not be the same branch. It might have gone through to a head office, but even so, I can still talk to them. So I figured I won't press option two, I'll press option one. Pressed option one. No music, answer straight away, and I got the guy that I was talking to. And I went, ah, well, <laughs> it's me. And he went, I was just going to call you back. And I thought, I don't believe you. You know, I do not actually believe he was going to ring me back. So anyway, after they'd gone, um, Gary came home. And round the back of the unit, they'd taped wires, which is lights that, you know. Anyway, so he'd untaped them. And they are two connectors that plug into a plug. You know, like you get... Um, TV, te telephone ones that go in the wall and you've got those little, little tiny, tiny eeny weeny plugs and they plug into something in, well, that's what, there's two wires with these little connectors. 
and I said, well, where's the plug? Because they must plug into something. Because they're German, they probably do that so that whatever country they're going to ship it to, they can give you the plug. Um, so all of the w units and the wiring is the same. But if it was going to the UK, they'd get a UK three pin plug that it plugs into. If they were going to somewhere else in Europe, it would be the two pin weirdy little looking plug. So no plug. So I called them straight away and I said, look, the guys have just left. They must have taken the plug with them because in the packaging, you know, when things are you buy stuff and it's all wrapped up in cardboard. Well, they chucked all that in the back of the van. So he said, oh, give it a few days. Give um, your, the guy, the sales guy a ring. And I thought they'll get rid of the boxes. They'll compact it. So um, I tried to ring them this morning and it said that they're not yet open. But I'm going to try and ring them because obviously they might have already compacted that rubbish which is silly because I rang them straight away and said that they've driven off with the plug. Um, I don't see why I should wait to talk to the actual salesman about that unless there's a problem with the fact that they don't send the plugs or something. I'll let you know. But I was, we had dramas yesterday, but the upshot of it is I rejected the larger one and I've yet to figure out what's happening. So how this all pans out, is whether or not I do my customer service review over there on Rocksteady. I did do a couple of videos yesterday for Rocksteady. They are going to pop up in the week, though, um, not the weekend. Although I think one of them might be all right for today. I could give it a try because it's a different type of channel. Maybe not. I don't know. But I've also got an unboxing to do over there um, and a few bits and pieces. So And I'll get, I'll get my derma rolling off up and running again so yeah what dramas though i'm gonna put you on hold for a second because i need to slurp my tea down and you know i don't like to do that in front that's better i've drunk my tea so that's fine um yeah so i'm not even sure if the <clears throat> the, sh the store the shop as i was gonna say is open today being sunday so it might be um might be that i have to wait till monday but what a kerfuffle, though. I love that word. Kerfuffle. Um, my word of the day. I like that word a lot. Uh, so I, I'm not really keen on going out. It's cold. Really, really cold. It's going to get worse next week, apparently. But um, I guess I'm just going to have to wrap up and go. But, um, oh. you know, the th when you're all cosy at home and the thought that you've got to go out in the cold, just like, oh. But I do, because yesterday I was making, I was making kind of a a casserole or a stew. I put it in the slow cooker and it was cooking away. And when it came to kind of late afternoon, I had a taste and I thought, it doesn't taste good enough. So um, I, we decided to switch it off, have that today. And we had a kebab yesterday. And oh, <laughs> really, it was because um, Gary had had curries he like a little ready meals for work so we couldn't have a curry and um i don't do chinese plus i looked at just eat and i was scrolling down the companies and the only one that doesn't charge for delivery is the usual indian that we get from and um but gary couldn't have curry or indian because he'd had three different ready meals so i figured you know what um the only other thing that we can both eat is kebabs. So I ordered it and, you know, it was all right, but I wasn't really that hungry anyway, so didn't really eat much of it. But I did eat. It was kind of all right. But the <laughs> the woman who delivered it, she rang us up and she said, um, your road's a bit unmade and um, it scrapes the bottom of my car. So is there any chance you could meet us at the top of the road with it? Now, normally the takeaway we get they do actually bring it down and it is the same company that usually deliver but now they're started to say um can you can you come and meet us so i said um gary went up the top of the road and met her and although you know a lot of them charge for delivery i think they charge one pound fifty so we said we'll charge you a pound for coming to collect it it was a joke but you know 
So Gary met her at the top of the road and um, pretended it was a drug deal, but it was actually a kebab. So then he came back and, yeah, but I thought that's going to happen all the time now because it isn't the, com the, you know, the actual shop, the company. It's Just Eat. So they're all going to start asking us to do that now. But we did hear the other day, I spoke to Colin, my neighbour, he brought a parcel in to me and we had a chat. And then yesterday I had to take a parcel to him, which is funny. But, um, yeah, the Amazon keep delivering them to the wrong address. I don't know why, but I'm getting either Lee's or um, Lee next door. And they're getting ours. It's just, you know, the name is really big on the front of the house. Anyway, um, so... Um, he was saying that he had spoken to the guy down the end, who I don't talk to because he's not a very nice man. And um, he said that they're going to do the road when all these puddles are gone. So I don't know who it is that's going to do the road, whether it's the company that used to do the dumping or not. But somebody is going to be putting the road to rights, which, you know, is fantastic news for me because my car's low profile and... Um, when Ray lived next door, he used to get a little digger and he would break up all the the, the ruts and the bumps and, and smooth the road out. So um, I don't know if he's going to do the same or if somebody's going to do the road, but it's welcome news. It's music to my ears. I've started going the other way when I go out in my car because I do scrape the underside. But it is only the engine cover that gets scraped. It's not... Um, not the actual engine, but at the same time, if the cover, if something happens to the cover, then you're going to be wrecking the engine. So, yeah, good idea as I, as far as I'm concerned. But um, other people, uh, there are a few people that think he's not a nice man, but I just happened to have a bit of a row with him one day and he was really rude. And so it sent me into a bit of a, you know, my mother came out. I'm not proud of it, but, well, I am. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, my mum was worse than I am, much. But um, occasionally, when somebody will push those p particular buttons, my mum does emerge. And she did that day. And so uh, now I just don't want to talk to him ever again. You know, as far as I'm concerned, he's, he is evil. Evil personified. But, you know, when Ray was around, he used to tell us bad stories about him anyway. And so it kind of coloured my vision towards him. Anyway, beside the point, rest of the place, all the people in this street, rest of them are all lovely. It's just him. He's a weasel. That's what I call him. He has a bit of a rodent look about him. And um, as soon as I look at him now, I just think weasel, you know. But that's actually... That's actually um, an insult to weasels. They're probably very cute. He is not cute in the slightest. Anyway, enough of that. Otherwise, my mother might come out again and we don't want to see that. No. Does your mother come out or your father when you're angry? Or My dad comes out when I'm looking at cakes. My mum comes out when somebody riles me. My mum was rude, though. I'm not rude. I'm very polite to people. I'm very polite to people who don't deserve to be polite to, but I'm still polite. But when I used to go out with my mother, um, I used to dread anyone talking to her, to be honest with you, because someone who'd try and strike up a conversation with my mum usually got some really strange reply that was quite catty. And I would have to then giggle like it was a joke and try and make light of it and shut my mother up, you know, kind of, um, yeah, she was rude to people in her old age, to be honest with you. She got quite, quite bad. But, you know, she was always one... My mum come from that era of um, sort of people that would come up after the war. Um, and she was a dreadful kind of boaster. I don't do that. In fact, I play down. Like, I was talking about the conservatory and I tell you it's not one of those that's real. You know, I always feel like I have to apologise for things, probably because I had to apologise for my mother so much, I don't know, but she was rude and she <laughs> she was a terrible one-upmanship person. When when I was young, I can remember the conversations that she would have with people and they were always trying to outdo each other. And so, yeah, thank goodness I'm not like that, I have to say. 
that part of um, the Joan gene I didn't get. But um, the feistiness when, when provoked, I did a bit. Yeah. But, you know, it takes a lot to provoke, I have to say. Or just wrong place, wrong time, wrong person, you know, that sometimes can do it. Like if there's lots and lots and lots of other irritants going on in your life, then, yeah, woe betide. That's another word, isn't it? Woe betide you. Woe betide you. Yeah, woe be. As a... <laughs> um, who is it who said that? Uh, Brian Connolly, the big yin. He said, who is this woe be? Yeah, I can remember that. Sorry about the Scottish accent. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm so uh, over all this delivery business and uh, stuff now. I just want it all to be over. But the this sort of what we've got to do now is put pictures on the wall and um, because we did have a painting, well, it's a, a picture that's got to go in the living room. It's very heavy, very. So that's got to go up and. Um, moving of everything around that's got to happen but i did order something yesterday i uh put in an order for some style craft yarn and straight after it realized i should have ordered a different thing first but i will also place that order so um whoever it was who asked me for some signet boho spirit i'm definitely going to do that as my next order so I've got some orders to package up today and send off tomorrow. I've got to brave the, the the cold caravan. Yarnavan, what I might do is go out there, put all my heaters on and then come back a bit later and do it, which is sounds like a plan. Gary's brother Martin giggled and laughed when I called it the Yarnavan. I think he thought yeah, it's quite a cute name. So that's what it is. Anyway, I'd better go upload this and see what else i've um, got to do today oh yes my win my giveaway my winners was yesterday so watch out for that a bit later and uh, i will see you on the next one thanks for watching bye for now